great night. Uh, I'm really glad that you all are out here at the kickoff of what will be a several month um, study to look at uh, the zoning in downtown and in the Trout Brook area. Trout Brook, by the way, is what we call the area around the CSX rail yard. Uh, we, we thought Trout Brook, you know, sounds not hell of a lot nicer than rail yard. So, you know, it's a curb appeal uh, as we try to, to get it developed. Emily here uh, is uh, going to be working with us, and we also have John Fay and Evan Sears from uh, our office at planning. And uh, we really want to get feedback from the public. Um, I know there's not a lot of people here tonight, but we're going to be on uh, Rock and Cable, and all of this is going to be up on the web. And so people will still be able to participate uh, both online and in person. And um, so tonight, what we're going to do is take a look at the existing conditions in downtown. Uh, we'll look at some what they call prototypical buildings, which are buildings that are built in other communities that might fit here in Brockton. And um, uh, we'll look at some public space and uh, street amenities. But and we're going to take you through that. So at the end of this process, we hope to have a series of recommendations that we can take to city council and have them uh, incorporate that into our new zoning ordinance. And the idea is, instead of zoning now says, we don't want this, we don't want that. We want zoning that says, this is what we want. This is how it should look. And it's going to make it a lot easier on the zoning board of appeals because you don't have to go to get changed because it's exactly what we, the community, want it to be. So with that, we're going to introduce Emily. And uh, shut up. Good evening. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you, Ron. Uh, delighted to see you all here. I know weekends are tough for people, so I really appreciate you being here. I'm going to take you quickly through what the process is and uh, spend a little bit more time on what we're doing tonight. And then I know that some of you have already had a chance to look at the boards. But this will be your chance to comment now that you know that what, what we're doing. So uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the zoning study itself and then get into a couple different options for zoning structures and zoning formats that we might look at. No, no, no. If anybody needs um, language assistance, oh, yes. we have students from uh, the Brockton School System who can help us with Spanish, Cape Verdean. Spanish, Asian, Creole. Spanish, Asian, Creole. Sorry. Yes. Okay, we're going to have a wonderful council who can help us. Yes. But all the materials will be up in the four major languages of the city. Yes, and to that point, um, I'll talk a little bit more about it when we get there, but you'll see some information around here that is in all four languages that we're using today. So uh, there are translations primarily of what's on the board available. So, um, and I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more. We're working with the steering committee. Some of those members are here tonight, and thank you very much for being here. Um, and then it's myself. I'm an urban planner and designer, but I've been lucky enough to work with Rocks before, so it's nice to be back uh, and working on this project. So this is where we are now in looking at the schedule. We are, as Rob said, at the very beginning of this. We've had a couple of committee meetings just to, to sort of get our hands around what this project is and to get prepared for tonight. After tonight, we're going to take your input back to the steering committee and start talking about what some of those options are and preparing options uh, in more depth of what the zoning could be, how it could look for the next public meeting. And that's going to be uh, in the uh, 23rd of March, uh, there is a date as well. Uh, and after that, and as Rob said, we're going to be going, coming out with the actual draft language and regulations and move forward for an iterative process, looking at those, coming up with the final draft, and then having the city take it forward to city council. So studies, zoning studies never come out of thin air. There's always been a previous either planning process or a series of events, uh, lots of variances coming in, um, the prospect of a new development, something that's triggered the process for zoning study. In this case, the city's been doing a lot of work already on both the downtown 
and the Tropical area, which is primarily centered uh, around that CSX parcel. So was, there was a downtown action strategy. Um, <coughs> there was an urban renewal plan for the downtown, and also one for Trout Brook. Uh, and there was, of course, also the Comprehensive Master Plan. So as we look at them here, we're also referring backwards to previous planning efforts and making sure that work that was already done is being incorporated into our thinking for this process. And so you'll see here that um, these plans actually did have recommendations for zoning changes. Uh, some of the plans must be. Some of the plans are a little bit older, which means we now have to check given changes since uh, you know 2020, uh, the changes in the pandemic, changes in the economy, Southwest Rail coming in. Are the previous recommendations still valid for this study? So part of what we're hearing from you today will help us go into thinking about that. So as we look at the, the zoning study, you can see the downtown boundary on the left, the Trump Road area, and its myriad zoning districts at the moment. Uh, it's got a lot going on there. Um, and the, the idea is to, you see them both together, these two green areas, is to think of them both separately and together. So there are uh, building conditions in each that are different from each other. The downtown has, actually, Brockton is really fortunate that it's downtown building stuff. We have some beautiful buildings, lovely height, uh, lovely presence on the street. You've got some opportunities for rehab, and you've got some opportunities for infill. Uh, that's along Main Street on Montello. You've got more opportunities for infill. As we get over to Trump Road and the CSX site, you know, something can happen on the CSX site. How we think about the zoning is important. But you've also got some very established neighborhoods running along that. And as we look at this study, um, and actually as, as we looked at the urban renewal plan that was on uh, that project as well, um, what's interesting about that, those neighborhoods is that the current zoning doesn't actually match up to what's there now. In other words, if you wanted to rebuild those houses or infill those houses, you couldn't do that. The, the dimensional standards for the zoning, and that's something we'll examine in this process, wouldn't allow you to do it. So our opportunity in the neighborhoods is to think about how you keep those neighborhoods. You don't have changes to them, and then what changes do you allow elsewhere in the study? And then what are the transitions uh, among all of these areas? So I'm going to touch lightly on this, because this very. gets really, sorry? Very lightly. Very, very lightly, yes. This gets really technical. Um, for today's um, presentation, for today's discussion, know that there are two major types of zoning. Euclidean zoning, which is what Brockton has now, and is primarily text and table based. Uh, it's very focused on the uses and on the dimensional standards and um, has, uh, you know, the, the requirements are, um, are laid out in a text and uh, table-heavy uh, document. Form-based code looks less at the uses and more about what is actually happening in terms of the physical development. Um, and so that's something that a lot of communities are moving towards because Euclidean zoning doesn't necessarily do well with the existing context. So if you've got an already developed downtown that you're trying to preserve and enhance, Euclidean zoning doesn't always work well with that. So a lot of communities are moving towards four days. So here you see, these are copies of Brockton's Euclidean current zoning. You can see the tax and the table. Um, zoning districts tend to be very large with Euclidean zoning, although they don't have to be. It can be very fine grain. Again, this is Brockton. You see these large sort of clumps so um, you see that the zoning can be much tighter and more um, targeted to specific built environments. And so um, just think, I'm just going to jump back very quickly. Brockton's current code, Euclidean code, text table base, the form based code is very illustrative. And so it still has the dimensional standards, it still has the uses. But with the pictures, uh, both uh, the diagrams and the photographs of what uh, people have valued and what they like, it's a lot easier when the development comes in to be able to say, okay, here on page 35, you are in this district. You're building this type of building, building mixed use building, building multi-family building commercial. 
these are the standards we have for each of those types of buildings. So just know that we are looking at both of those, what Rockland has now, what many other communities are starting to have, and trying to evaluate them in process. And you'll see the materials here today are here towards helping us understand what people would prefer to see. So we have uh, instructions, we have a handout for each language. We also have this, which has the translation at each table. You'll see that there's a, a, a number code here. Um, on the big uh, document is that same number code, just in English. This provides the translation in Hagarian, uh, Creole, Haitian Creole, and Spanish for that, just to make it a little easier for the entire community to understand. I will put a caveat that the translation service isn't necessarily an architectural planning translation service. So those of you who are familiar with the languages, if you read them and it's not being translated correctly, please let me know so I can work with them on that. So as Rob said, and I'm not going to go through every single one of these maps, we want to release you to do that. But we're going to start with existing conditions. Map one, which is here, uh, just orients you into the neighborhood. It's just a map of the two areas that we're looking at. So you can come back and refer to it. There's a smaller scale map on each page just of what we're looking at. Main Street is right here. Um, so it goes two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and ten at the back. We're also looking at Mantello Street and so um, Port Street and Legion Parkway. And what we're doing with these is these are the existing conditions. This is what's here now, or at least what was here as of the last time Google Earth came through this area. I think we know there's at least one building that's been upgraded since then. And the idea is it's a tour, basically. You're going to head down the street in one direction and come back up in the other direction. And it shows you what's there now as though you were walking down the street. And what we're hoping is to hear your comments on that. Do you like these buildings? Do you see opportunities? Do you not like these buildings? And if so, what do you like or not like? And to help you, each one of these areas, you'll be able to see, oh, actually, it does work, huh? You're going to see an example of the types of things we're looking at. So in this case, this building on Montella Street, the two buildings on Montella Street, have very different expressions of their architecture. In other words, um, the way their are boxes, right, the big tall buildings, but the way the architecture looks uh, is quite different from both of them. One of them has very strong vertical lines, uh, and so the building is defined by those vertical lines. The other is very horizontal. They have different expressions of their windows and different expressions of what it feels like to be on the street. The storefront uh, is quite well defined on one of them and not so much on the other. So we're going to ask you to look at those and think about what you're seeing and how it feels to be on the street that looks like that. Uh, we've done Port Street as well. And again, we stopped before we got to the neighborhoods. This is primarily the commercial part of Port Street, and that's because we're not expecting those neighborhoods to change. If anything, the zoning would rather not touch them or it would further protect them and enhance them. And we did uh, Legion Parkway as well. So once you get through the first five boards, all about Brockton, the remaining board, the remaining uh, six to nine boards are about different types of buildings. So you have mixed use, um, the mixed use we're all pulled from Somerville, and it's the same thing. We're showing you the whole building, and then we're calling out different elements that could be um, uh, addressed in the zone, and asking you what, what you think of them. So these buildings that you can see fitting in um, uh, Brockton are the elements that we're calling out this morning to you. You'll see that a little bit more when you get to the sheets. So we're looking at mixed use for the multifamily. We're looking at commercial. Now commercial is actually coming from Cambridge. And uh, the reason I think this particular street is that it's a stretch, stretch of Mass Ave. And it's interesting because it has a lot of older buildings in it, older buildings in it, and a lot of newer buildings in it. And so the infill development that happens on the street is very similar to what could happen on Main Street or on Montello and Rockford. In other words, contemporary buildings being mixed in with historic buildings. And some of them are, for example, this one here uh, are very contemporary. What's interesting about that one is that this is part of the same development. And so if you look at the images more closely, you'll see that they rehab the historic building, put in a very contemporary building next to it, 
I link the two of them with nice little landscape art and open space for the public. So it's canvas like setting. So these are all along the same. I think uh, it's uh, these two are across the street from this one, and then this is an entire city block. Have a look at those and see how you feel about the way that you build it and, uh, and build with the older ones. We're also asking, as Rob mentioned, about the public realm. Now, the public realm is what you, as a member of the public, are experiencing as you walk down the street. So some of it is city-owned public property, and it's the street space, it's the light, it's the street furniture. But some of it is privately owned, but visually accessible to you. And so we want to see what you think about um, some of these strategies and whether or not they're appropriate for Boston. And this is really about how attractive the street is to be on, how comfortable, how safe it feels, how welcoming it feels. So have a look at some of these options that are targeted to different users. And then finally, board 10 at the end is for anything else you can think of that you want us to know about this process. If it wasn't captured in these diagrams, so you think it's important, please uh, put your comments there. And we'll be using the stickies, the three by three stickies, and the pens, the chair, um, uh, at each of the tables to write your comments, just put them somewhere on the board. And then finally, next steps, as I mentioned before, uh, we'll take everything that you give us tonight put it together, talk with the steering committee, and start coming up with our strategy for recommendations in March. Do you have anything else to um, I was just going to say, so, you know, um, there's a couple of things that we're looking at. You know, type of zone, do you want a whole bunch of words that nobody wants to read, or do you kind of, I don't want to make it super simple and say it's a picture book, but it, it's very clear as to what a developer or property owner can do with their property. The next thing is, it's cold outside. Nobody wants to walk down the street. So we're going to walk down, you down the street with these pictures, as Emily said. And we really want to know from you, how do these, how does the existing conditions, what we have now, is that your vision of the future of Brockton? Um, is that what you want to walk by every day? Or are there other buildings here that could be the future of Brockton, especially you all? You're the future of the city, so we want to hear from you guys also. Thank you. Any questions about what we're doing tonight? Oh, wait. Yes. Uh, the post-it notes. She knows what my handwriting looks like, so if there are only my notes on there, I, I'll get dinged. So I really need you guys to, to comment. That's why we're not doing dots. Did I bring a whole bunch of dots. Exactly, yeah. Any questions about the process before we get started? This is an open house, so take as long or as little time as you like. If you get a fresh group of people, I'll redo the presentation at 7. But otherwise, I'll be around to answer any questions that you might have. And please, really do welcome your comments, uh, questions, anything that is your response to seeing these images. Thank you very much. Oh, no, no, I'm not. No, no. Oh.